Hey guys, well I'm in the shop today and I'm going to be working on the belt drive. We're going to be making some risers and so the first step is just to notch the back of the riser like so. I'm just going to machine all this corner off. This will sit up like so. And so I want the back corner to be kind of notched off. All right, so let's get this machined out. It's been a while since I've worked on the mill. It's been a while since I've done any cam processing. So that was quite interesting. If you don't do it often enough, you get kind of, uh, you just kind of forget some of your feeds and speed. So it took me a minute to kind of get that. So let's see what we've got here. All right, so let's get started. chatter and I can see but it's throwing the chips out pretty good I uh, may have been taking a little bit of an aggressive cut this is three quarters inch thick so I'm pretty happy with that that'll be okay for this project okay guys so now I'm gonna start boring the holes for the riser I tell you, it's times like this where I wish I really had my power draw bar uh, because changing these tools becomes a pain. Uh, I'm going to be boring one hole with a center drill and then coming back uh, with a drill and then coming back with a quarter inch end mill to do a counter bore. I've got one hole here, one hole about right there, and one toward the end. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it in two setups because I don't want it rocking on me. So here we go.
got the quarter inch end mill in here and got it changed out. So now we're going to do a counterboard. This is 20 millimeters deep. turned out really nice all right so now now that we've got this done we're going to take and slide this down and we're going to do the other two holes on the other end and we've got to uh, put a recess on the other end so let me get set up for that okay I've got it repositioned and the first thing we're going to do is go back and forth and we're going to notch this out it's going to be about an eighth of an inch deep and this is for where the motor sits it needs to be a little bit lower than where I'm going to be putting my power draw bar and top plate. So that's the first thing we're going to do. I've already got the end mill in there. This is a 3 8 two flute end mill. center drilling and then some drilling all right I've got the tapping head in there got the gearbox changed to compensate for the uh, speed we're going to be tapping at 400 rpm this is the M8 by 1.25 tap simple. Uh, I really like this compression tapping head. It makes it really easy. All right, we're good to go. All right, so we finished up the risers and I had a change of plan midstream, so that's why I have this hole here on one side and not the other. I was going to go with just two holes on each side and sort of a pendulum for the motor mount, but I decided uh, to put two slots because that was going to put it uh, real tight up against the motor, and I didn't know if I'd be able to get, uh, get in there easy to adjust it. So for now, uh, I'm going to have two sliders. This is for the original Leeson. IEC motor, excuse me, it's not the original motor, but it's the uh, original three-phase Leeson IEC motor that I had on here, the one horsepower. I'm going to be going with a bigger motor after I do my servo motor upgrade. It's going to be a horse and a half, and it's going to be a standard marathon uh, motor, but it's going to have a lot more torque. It's going to be a thousand to one. So when I do that upgrade, I'm going to mount a block on each side because that motor is a little bit wider. 
and then I'll have the two holes in it and it'll have a pivoting type tensioner on it instead of a slide tensioner. But the way I've got this worked out is this hole here will mount in this hole on the gearbox and then the motor has these two mounting holes. Let me get some light over here. Here and here. These two holes. So those two holes will coincide with these two and then this front one here is an M6. It will go right here. So it's going to kind of sit up there like so. And it'll just bolt directly to the original bolt hole locations. I try to keep everything as stock as possible when I'm doing these conversions. Uh, it just seems to work out better. If I ever want to convert this mill over to back to a manual mill, the only real modifications I did was cut out a notch in the y-axis saddle. Everything else has been pretty much uh, stock stuff so all the bolts are all standard uh, metric threads that the machine came with so alright so now that I have these risers made I'm not going to do anything fancy here I'm not going to come back and fly cut these uh, it's all going to be mechanical stuff it's not really going to be seen there will be a cover over all this uh, when I'm finished so I don't think it needs to be too uh, pretty it's just going to be structural so next we'll um in the next video i'll machine out the motor mount and then we can get this mounted up and hopefully get the belt drive running so stay tuned for that video thanks for watching guys please subscribe to the youtube channel if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thumbs up if you like the video and most importantly be safe